So have you got tail light and clearance light issues with your ice castle? Of course you do. That's built right in from the factory. So my ice castle is a 2013. I was having issues with the clearance lights uh, all the way around and the tail lights. They were working intermittently and when they were on, they weren't very bright. This particular ice house, and I think most of them have like five ground points in there that you have to make certain that are clean and well grounded. So there's one on the bottom side of this V right there. See that bolt? That is a ground point. And they're, they're just like that all the way around. It goes up, it's like a seven inch bolt that goes up through the frame, through the house housing frame in the wood and pinches a, a wire in there. So to remedy this bad ground issue, you have to peel the diamond blade out to get to it. Because when you turn it underneath, the, it just spins. There's no uh, star washer, there's no, they didn't put a lock washer, they didn't even put a ring terminal on the wire. Back here, This is also a ground point that you have to make sure is clean. That's obviously pretty easy to get to. And there's one bolt like I showed earlier under each tail light. There's that one there. Right there. And when I took my bolt out on the other side, I've done one location so far. When I took this bolt out, about five gallons of rusty water came out of my frame. So I'm going to also drill a weep hole in the frame so it doesn't just stay wet in there. That was kind of an unexpected surprise. So the first thing I'm going to do is take off this little end cap here. Uh, of course, it's super tight. I don't want to strip it. You'll have to re-silicone this when you're finished as well. And the way this stuff works, it looks like hard PVC, but it isn't. It's like a real soft, um, it's called screw trim. I just use a little screwdriver. Just get under there and get it moving a little bit. And then you can just tip it out like that. Comes right out. You gotta take all these screws out of the trim. And then you gotta take all these, well, I'm gonna go up to about here. Won't really do me any good to go any higher because tail lights in the way, it won't bend out any further. The ones for the diamond plate are shorter screws, so put those separate from the trim screws. You'll have to get a knife of some sort and cut the silicone on the other side over here. So it kind of, you're going to be pulling this piece out a little bit and then you have to take the corner trim out with you. Don't crank on this too hard because you'll bend this piece. It's okay to, you know, persuade it, but don't crank it. So, once you get this out far enough, you can get underneath here to where this bolt is. It might be easiest to go from this side. Sorry about the funky camera angle. I don't know how else to really get in there. So here's the bolt. It comes up through the frame. And inside here, I've got some house wrap. Inside there, there's a bolt. So I'm doing this kind of blind. I'm actually looking at the camera monitor to see what I'm doing.
not only is this a bizarre angle, I can't see what I'm actually doing. And the monitor is showing it backwards, so I'm really all over the place here. So you can get a better look like that. So there's the bolt. And then, you know, the bolt. And there's no, like, lock washer or anything on there. And the, this wire is just pinched between two flat washers here. So you have to get a wrench on here so you can get a socket on the bottom of the frame, or a wrench, or however you're going to do it, and spin this bolt out. And what I'm doing is I'm putting a, um, a ring terminal on this wire instead. And then I bought a star washer for each of these bolts that will bite into the bottom of the frame. And then I'm putting a lock washer on the top as well so this doesn't vibrate loose anymore. Hopefully that will solve my ground issues within the trailer. So you just have to sneak a wrench in under here. Try not to cut yourself on a diamond plate. It's not terribly sharp, but kind of. Oh yeah, there's all the water coming out of this side now. That's all water that couldn't get out of the frame. And I got about five gallons out of the other side too. I'm surprised there's more in here, wow. Yuck. I don't know if you can really see that, but oh boy, there's a lot of slack on this one. This is the wire that's just crushed between the two washers. The other side had like like no slack, and that might be why this this like copper. Oh, this is getting pretty sad too. This all the loose copper here was all broken off on the other side. So then I think there was just a few strands making contact. comes right off. These are seven inch bolts. Seven inch by three eighths, I'm pretty sure. And they're not in straight, so when you go to put these back up through the frame, it, it's like a little frustrating. Oh, there's the other washer. It's a little frustrating because, you, you know, you can't see what you're doing and you're trying to blindly get it through there. So there's the full bolt. And they're pretty nasty when you get them out of there, <laughs> apparently from all the water just sitting in here and rusting stuff away. I'd really hate to see what the inside of these frames look like after about 15 years. Anyhow, that's what you're going to get out of there. To get a good ground on the frame, you know, it's kind of yucky under here. I'm just going to take my Dremel tool with a little cutoff wheel on there and just grind the frame basically and uh, get it down to clean metal again. You know, this job probably wouldn't be all that bad if it wasn't just soaked. <laughs> and because I can't really get my head under there, I found the easiest thing to do is take your cell phone, spin the camera around, and just take a look. Or a mirror, I guess if you're low tech. At least this wire isn't corroded, it's just tweaked from being pinched. So I'm going to cut the nasty part off. So here's the ring terminal. Just put it in there. Give it a good pinch. So when I put the bolt back through, I'm going to clean the bolt up with the Dremel as well, but um, yeah, it's nasty. If these are any worse, you'd probably, these are actually 8 inch bolts, I thought they were 7s, they're 8 inch. You'd probably be better off just buying new ones if they're any worse than this. I've seen photos of these like just practically gone, so if yours are in really sad shape, definitely replace them. Don't, <laughs> don't make yourself do this twice. So, before I put this bolt back in, put a little star washer thing on there, like that, and that hopefully will help 
dig into the frame and get a good positive ground on there. Okay, so the bolts are as clean as it'll get. Mainly I wanted to get, you know, just this little area here and then under the, the head of the bolt there. So I get the star washer on there. Another thing you can do, it, which makes it a little easier to find the outlet of the hole out there, just get a screwdriver because it's smaller diameter than the, the bolt, obviously. So feel around with that. And once you find it with that, you can kind of look at the angle of that, get kind of an eyeball like this. This hole is not straight above, it's over to the left and towards me. So knowing, kind of ballparking where that is will help me get the bolt in there. There, much easier. I'm also going to take the two washers that came out of there and uh, clean those up with the Dremel as well. So get that opened up again. Find my friendly little bolt in there. And then on goes the ring terminal. So one washer, ring terminal. Oh yeah, he's gonna like it in there. Make sure you tuck any wire that you may have pulled. Tuck it back in there neatly. Okay, and then the other flat washer. Now this isn't very exciting to watch because you can't really see what's going on. Neither can I. Okay, and then trusty lock washer. Okay, and then the nut. And I turn the, the bolt, not the nut in this case, just to keep from twisting the new ring terminal and the wire around the bolt and breaking it off. So if I hold this stationary and turn the bolt, then that doesn't happen. So this little cut that you make in the tie back, I just used a little bit of um, like um, metal, you can use duct tape or probably even packaging tape, whatever, but I use this, this 3M, I don't know if it's too dark to see. It's like a metalized like foil tape. It's meant for duct work. It's got a super aggressive adhesive on it. So I'll just take a little piece of that. The trick is to get it to stick to the Tyvek more than your finger. That's it. Just close it up like that. That's how it should look. So there we go. Hopefully you found that helpful. Thanks for watching.